The reason that hip hop music and rap music is always about drugs, violence, and women is actually very simple. And Ice Cube himself has been very open about it. Watch this clip. Who own the labels on the prisons? Literally the same people? Literally the same people. It, it seems really suspicious, if you want to say that word. The records that come out are really geared to push people towards that prison industry. Private prisons. This business is single-handedly influencing the hip-hop and rap music industry because just like Ice Cube said, those who own the record labels own the private prisons. And if there's anyone in the world who knows about that, it's him. Meek Mill, he even said himself, the more ignorant stuff I rap about, the more I get paid. And that's the reason why. Paid to rap about that stuff. They actually pay us more when we rap about more ignorant stuff so i make nowadays it just seems like it's a competition on who can say the most wildest things make the darkest music videos just to influence the generations to act more aggressively if you sit here and tell me that the music you listen to doesn't influence the way you act your energy the way you think i don't believe it and i'm not afraid to admit it i would blast 21 savage every single day at the gym just because it makes me feel aggressive it makes me want to you know throw weights around and it just gave me that extra push that I needed. I have two perfect examples, Glorilla and Sexy Red. These are two female artists. They're on the come up. They're one of the most popular artists in the industry right now. They got pictures with Drake, P Diddy, all of the big names in the industry. They're getting featured on all the popular songs. And just look what Glorilla posted on her Instagram. And I just want to let y'all know, be toxic for the rest of your 20s. You only get one life. Live your toxic 20s. You never get to be 20 years old, 21, 22, 23, 24, none of that ever again in your life. Be toxic, cause don't get in your 30s thinking you could just go slashing ties and doing all this crazy shit. You too old for that now, you too mature. Be toxic for the rest of your 20s. And if you delusional, turn that shit up a notch. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your 20s. You only get to do this shit one time. That is the problem right there. You're a rising star in the music industry. You have a cult-like fan base, and you're telling kids in their 20s to go and be toxic, to slash tires, because you can't do that stuff when you're 30 years old. I, I mean, that's got to be a joke. That is for sure influencing younger people to be worse than they were. I'm not even going to show you anything about Sexy Red because, honestly, her music is just filthy. She's just saying that she uses her body and other things to persuade men to get what they want and honestly that's what a lot of female rappers rap about anyway she just does it on a whole nother level that's never been seen before and i'm not even exaggerating i mean i you got to realize i was i was the biggest hip-hop fan i know i know 90 percent of all the hits that have ever been made probably word for word and i'm telling you i'm not exaggerating the newer that these artists are you're talking about yeet lil uzi vert sexy red cardi b megan the stallion the newer generation, I'm not talking about like Tupac or 50 Cent or any of those. I'm talking about this newer generation. It is just getting worse and worse. I mean, you, can, you can't escape music. You're hearing these things now in your car. You're hearing it while you're at the gym, at the laundromat. And it's just making society as a whole normalized to this type of behavior. I always think about this story and it kind of wakes me up every time I think about it. I think I was in high school and uh, my mom was driving me somewhere. We were walking into the car. My Bluetooth was connected to the music. And I think the song was Or Na by The Weeknd. It, the lyrics are just very, you don't want to listen to it with your mom. And uh, I'm Middle Eastern. My parents are very Middle Eastern, so they don't listen to American music. They're not used to hip hop and like the things that it says. They, and they, they understand and speak English very well. So she knew exactly what it was saying. And the weekend is not like mumbling. The guy's actually singing the songs. And um, she heard the music. And I don't know what it was saying. You can look up the lyrics. But I felt so embarrassed to like be listening to that music when she heard the lyrics. And she's like, Mark, is this what you listen to? And I'm like, yeah, this is what everyone listens to. What are you talking about? I sat there listening to the lyrics and I'm in high school, so I didn't really think much of it. But now the other day I was looking at the lyrics and I'm like, oh my goodness. I was what? Eight, 17, 18 years old. Listen to this with my mom. And I'm like, what does she think about these lyrics? You know, she's used to listening to like the Beach Boys or some 70s, 80s music. I don't know. She's not used to this kind of stuff. Her mind was blown and she was like so 
disgusted at me and I felt so embarrassed and I'm like, damn, she knew, she knew. <laughs> now, does that mean if I'm in someone's car and they're playing the weekend that I'm gonna shut it off and yell at them and do the same thing? Honestly, probably not because you know what? I have a social life too. I'm 26 years old. Now, not that I'm saying that's an excuse, but I know in my own head exactly what the agenda is and what they're saying and their reasoning behind all of this. And it's hard, especially I feel like the younger you are, because this is all that people listen to our age. And it's a it's a hard balance because I'm not going to go and destroy my whole social life. If I'm at my friend's house and he's playing a hip hop artist, what am I going to do? Yell at him and leave and storm off? No, I'll be like, yo, you know, maybe plant the seed, show him one of my videos and just be like, yo, something to think about. You know, I'm not deaf. I like the I like the weekend's voice. I'll tell you guys, I'm not ashamed. You know, the record labels know what they're doing. They get the best looking people, the best sounding people, the best voices because of exactly what we've been talking about the past couple minutes. Now, if that ruined your whole perspective of me, then I apologize. I'm just saying it the way it is. I'm just trying to be as real as possible because I have a life of my own. My whole goal is just to open up people's eyes, to plant the seed and just get them to start thinking a little bit. Because in my head, I know when I go and out in public and I hear the, I already know, I already know, I know the agenda. I know the reasoning behind all of this. It doesn't bother me. You know, I got Jesus Christ in my heart and I'm not letting that demonic energy get into my head, into my heart. Because I already know. But for others, my whole idea on social media is I'm just trying to open your eyes. You know, why, why are they rapping about these things? You know, the, the record label is probably going out. They're like, let's find someone with minimal talent or a little bit of talent who is beautiful, who will say whatever we want them to say and do whatever we want them to do. And we'll show them an amount of money that they have never seen before. And we're going to push out their music on all the radios. So wherever you're walking, you're going to hear it. You turn on your car, you're going to hear it. You go to the gym, you're going to hear it, right? And that'll influence the younger generation because this is going to keep playing and playing and playing. The music's only getting worse and worse and worse as these newer artists are coming up. So I hope you all understand where I'm coming from. The whole point of this video was just, just to be more relatable and more realistic because life's hard, man. It's not easy to just go out there and live as crazy as that sounds. It's not. And um, we're all in this together. And um, hope you guys hope you guys just understand. And uh, I love you all. I'm going to leave you with um, this video by Crazy Bone. You guys probably have heard of him if you've been listening to hip hop for a while. Um, just listen to his story and it uh, it'll kindly it'll it'll give him his side and experience of the prisons and the uh, record labels relationship. Just listen to this secret meeting that changed rap music and destroyed a generation. Damn. So says, hello. <clears throat> After more than 20 years, I finally decided to tell the world what I witnessed in 1991, which I believe was one of the biggest turning points in popular music and ultimately American society. Closed door meeting with a small group of business with business insiders to discuss rap music's new direction. Mm. Rap music's new direction. Yeah. Little did I know we would be asked to participate in one of the most unethical and destructive business practices ever seen. Christ. So said so so this was the meeting. <clears throat> the meeting was held at a private residence on the outskirts of Los Angeles. I remember about 25 to 30 people were 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 being there. Right. Most of them familiar faces. Our casual our casual chatter was interrupted when we were asked to sign the confidentiality agreement preventing us from publicly discussing the information presented during the meeting. Mm. Needless to say, this intrigued in some cases disturbed many of us. This meeting began one of the industry colleagues who shall remain nameless like everybody else thanked us for attending. He then gave the floor to a man who only introduced himself by first name and gave no other details about his personal background. Mm. I think he was the owner of the residence, but that was never confirmed. He briefly praised all of us for the success we had achieved in our industries and congratulated us for being selected as a part, uh, as part of this small group of decision makers. 
At this point, I begin to feel slightly uncomfortable in the strangeness of this gathering. The subject quickly changed as the speaker went on to tell us that the respective companies we represented had invested in a very profitable industry which could become even more rewarding with our active involvement. Damn. He explained that the companies we worked for had invested millions into, millions into the building of privately owned prisons and that our positions of influence in the music industry would actually impact the profitability of these investments. Hmm. Then he says, I remember many of us in the group immediately looking at each other in awe and confusion. At the same time, I didn't know what a private prison was, but I wasn't the only one. Sure enough, someone asked this, someone asked what these prisons were and what any of this had to do with music. <clears throat> we were told that these prisons were built by privately owned companies who received funding from the government based on the number of inmates. Mm -hmm. The more inmates, the more the government would pay these prisons. Mm -hmm. It was also made clear to us that since these prisons are privately owned, as they become publicly traded, we'd be able to buy shares. He told us that since our employees had become solid investors in this prison business, it was now in their interest to make sure that these prisons remain filled. Our job would be to help make this happen by making music which promote criminal behavior, mm. rap being the music of choice. Mm. He assured us that this would be a great situation for us because rap music was becoming an increasingly profitable market for our companies. And as employees, we'd also be able to buy stocks in these prisons.